but I mean, one of the interesting parts about it is having the confidence to take a, a, a protracted break when you're hot, when things are happening, when, I mean, the, the, the machine dictates that, you know, uh, here you are, you've reached this, this new level in your career and you're in your thirties now, you better take advantage of it. Let's go. You know, um, cause it's all uh, over what, when I'm 40, <laughs> I, I, you know, these are, I mean, the, the, these things will get said to you yeah, in subtle sure. ways, right? How, how do you, how did you find the confidence to be able to say, you know, it's okay if I'm not, putting stuff out there uh, every month for the next year or two? Well, I guess it would be instantly irrelevant if what was going out wasn't somehow rooted in a relevant part of myself because that would it would become all a moot point if I wasn't actually there anymore, you know? Mm. And that was what was starting to happen near the end was I felt a little bit like in the Back to the, in back to the Future where the people start to fade off the Polaroid. <laughs> like, I just, I wasn't right. quite present anymore, You're you know? You're losing so yourself and in, all that. In, in that case, and there's really no point. So, uh, you know, it only made sense to pause for a second. It, it, the, the title, Metals, you've said you wanted a concept that could blanket the album. Um, what, what, how does metals do that? Metals. Metals. <laughs> Still don't know how to say the word. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's a pretty <clears throat> mercurial. Oh. You know, it it's actually a word that I've I've had. I I went and just did a press tour around Europe, and I've I I was kept making this point that if you were to word associate metals with you know, 10 different people, you'd get te 10 different answers. Like if you said, quick, what's the first word that comes to your mind? And then I realized I'd been saying that, but I hadn't actually proven that to myself. So then I thought, well, I have like a different person here every 20 minutes. So I started to test the theory and I kept a little note. And after about 60, there hadn't been one repeated word. People were saying things like heavy, glitter, ceremony, oh. scaffolding, cell phone, my wedding ring. You know, they were all saying all of these things and nobody was saying the same thing twice. And if you put that word up against each song in a way, it pulls certain, it magnetizes out of each song different elements that mm. might, you know, different characteristics. And it's pretty physical. It's visible. It's not so conceptual as mm. maybe the reminder or let it die, which are more ideas. Mm. But... So yeah. Although the person who said ceremony heard it as medals. Yeah, maybe. Uh, see, see? This is <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. The problem yeah, is. Yeah, I thought they were just really poetic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, many musicians describe songwriting as a cathartic act. I mean, that's the orthodoxy, right? You've ac said you actually need therapy <laughs> after writing uh, after writing songs. Uh, tell me about that. I think I just I like to rail against these fluffy. Um, these fluffy ideas of what making music or paintings or sculptures mm. or any of these sort of extremely private, difficult acts of pulling something in and then you you spit something out and it's what you do, it's your craft. But it's it's really, there's a, there's just, there's kind of this cultural gloss over that happens. It's just it, where everyone imagines it being like someone's floating on a cloud writing a song and singing into the butterfly breeze or something. And it's I, I think I was more just maybe whoever asked me that question was was doing the fluffy tone thing. So I was right. just reacting with like it's not it, it's a little bit muscular, you know, it's it's right. heavy it, lifting. It's it, not it, like it, it, but it isn't a release necessarily, huh? Well, it is, I guess. I guess, I guess it is. In, in some sense, it's sort of like but you either add pressure or you take off pressure. But you're engaged in basically you're engaged in a kind of internal pressurization, and and you release it, and you sort of like mm. let off some steam. You collect more steam in certain places, and you know, and that process continues when you arrange stuff and bring it into the, you know, with Mocking Gonzalez when we started to arrange things initially, you know, and then Brian LeBarton, who's over there on the record as well, when, when we started to expand it for a band and. Think ideas like let's get 30 women, all, you know, right. all of that stuff is just steps beyond the, that initial sort of like pressure game. <laughs> Let me ask you about the pressure game then. The, 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 um, <clears throat> mu musically speaking, uh, this, this record runs the gamut. Uh, there's ballads, pop songs, experimental numbers. Uh, it's been pointed out that there aren't obvious singles on this record. One, two, three, four. Um, and that yeah, the chicken lady has gone into retirement. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think it was an affectionate uh, callback. Um, That's all right. But it's only national radio. It's cool. <laughs> but when when you have that um, um, pop hit, I mean, was was so, some of that stuff playing in your mind? 
um, uh, i.e., am I going to do, do, can I match that? Do I want a, a single, was it a conscious decision to not write something that could be a, a single? How did that affect you? Well, I guess that, you know, that song, you know, one, two, three, four, lifting itself out of the album, kind of like spreading its wings. And as they unfolded, they just got bigger and bigger. And it was just became this force, you know, mm. and, and it, 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 it kind of eclipsed the record. It started to define the record and it definitely started to define me. And that wasn't something that I had, you can ever imagine being the case when you're making a record. It's, it's a little collection of each thing makes sense in relation to the rest. And in a way, most of the songs on the record would point back to the record, would potentially point back to me, mm. would say I come from there. But it was a bit like the the wayward child that was, you know, forgot where it came from. And so when it started to like expand exponentially to, you know, eclipse everything that, that seemed much more real to me. And so I wasn't seeking out a circumstance like that again. I, I wasn't avoiding it either because, I mean, with enough time off, I really wasn't reacting to the reminder anymore. It felt like right. just a hopscotch square on, on a very long But if you talked about the romance of that exists around the notion of an artist writing a song and the catharsis, is there also a romance around having a big hit? Um, and and in a way, do you? I mean, I've, I've, I've read somewhere that you you it was, it was um, you appreciated the fact that you're signed to a label in America that that um, that uh, had a, an artist when you first signed with them named Lady Gaga, who's kind of unknown, and then kind of took <laughs> over the world and the label. Yeah. So that you could kind of do your thing in the corner and not get noticed. Um, is there something that you actually prefer about not having uh, hit songs? Well, I guess you can steer more, you know. It's, I mean, what, by the end of the reminder, it was, it w there was a lot of me just trying to keep up, just trying to stay the kind of crest rather than getting completely tumbled into the wave. And, and that amount of energy is just spending trying to keep your grip on things means that you're not thinking about the Im actually important things, which is, you know, there's a very long list of important things and that ne that shouldn't be at the top of the list, you know. Mm. So, yeah, I think that joke was that right when I was sort of, okay, I'm going to take a little break, you know, she became the worldwide smash <laughs> hit person, and and my label were, were really excited about that, and so I, I I didn't hear a peep from them until I literally said, oh, by the way, I just finished recording, and here's a new record, so <laughs> right, right. It, were, it was perfect. They didn't have time to mic micromanage anything. Yeah, 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 no, and actually, I've never in my life had any meddlesome communication from anyone in a label I, I there's I, I'm I don't know why I'm the only person in the world with so much luck but mm. my home labels in France they're fantastic arts and crafts have always been friends and mm. are fantastic and you know Interscope in America for all of the cliches or guesses you could think a giant label that hasn't been the, in my experience at all now when you say meddlesome do you mean <laughs> meddlesome or metals no like uh, gold metal <laughs> <laughs> with the success of the reminder and, and and that you had to adapt to an entirely new set of pressures and demands and and that it does take a toll and you've uh, you've spoken to that and the break that you took how do you do you have a um a road map for how you're going to deal with this record in the next couple of years of touring etc to kind of inoculate yourself from uh, getting to that place of exhaustion um yeah, we have a whole we have a whole bunch of little grenade pins inside uh, habit forming parts of touring to try to make ourselves not go go a little ear numb. Really, I guess mm. you know we're. I mean, I have a, an amazing band. I just have to raise my hands to these guys over here because and Charles Spearin, who's also in the band, yeah. he, he didn't join us this morning. But um, yeah, they're. I think that these guys, each of their musical minds, are are such that I don't think we're going to get tired, you know, and, and I don't think we're going to be repeating ourselves. And we haven't even really played a show yet, and I already know that to be true. I mean, the record came out three days ago, and we just played How Come You Never Go There, like, completely differently than we ever have, you know? So I think that's really the... I think that's the key. But personally, too, are there rules like uh, I, I'm not going to tour for more than four weeks at a time without yeah. taking a break or something? Three. Th weeks. Is it three weeks? Yeah. And then how long do you break after three Two. weeks? Two. Okay. This is all in theory. <laughs> it, won't, it won't be the case until the Your manager year. chip is freaking out on the other <laughs> side of the... We've got a 12-week tour planned starting next week. I think he's got a cover band f to fill in those two weeks <laughs> right, off. To, right, right, right. <laughs> Fest, the cover yeah, band. Yeah, Fest. Uh, 
Uh, let me end with this, we, uh, and I want to talk to you forever, but we, uh, when you visited us last year and you were sitting here, this this qualifies as, uh, I filed this under best answer ever. Uh-oh. Uh, no, it was so good. I asked you what advice you, the vice of today, would give to a younger version of yourself. I don't know if you remember this, but you actually said that you saw the younger version of you uh, as wiser uh, than, than, than the current version because... Um, you were all fueled up and oblivious to external distractions when you were younger. Um, so you saw the world in a more complete way. Given that sentiment, and in light of the hectic road ahead, what will you be holding on to to help keep this fun for you, to go back to the mm. wide-eyed girl? Hmm. Well, we're going to get the Criterion Collection for the bus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to try to swim a lot. Uh-oh, here it's back. <clears throat> the how come you never sing go there? Sing a song. I'm gonna play. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I'm, I I think it's n- things have never felt hairy on the inside. Well, wait, that's a terrible way to say it. Things have never <laughs> felt um, like maxed out and overexposed and exhausting on the inside of things. I, I'm surrounded with really fantastic, extremely kind and normal people. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't think that I'll be needing to think about things in those same terms anymore, which is a great a great position to be in. So I can thank the reminder for that, actually, for all that I needed to take a break, et cetera, et cetera. For <clears throat> it, it afforded me that time off, which has now put me back at a, strangely back into a teenage mindset of not feeling overwhelmed anymore. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Congrats on the record.